Mathematicians have been slicing up cones since the 4th century BC. Here we'll look at one of these famous cross sections, the ellipse. Along the way, we'll discover an ingenious proof by Stoneface here, germinal dandelion of the 19th century. Slice a right circular cone with a plane at an angle and the cross section forms an ellipse. You can think of an ellipse as a stretchy circle with not one center, but two. The foci, foci, fo focus, yeah. Take any point along the perimeter and draw lines from it, from that point to each of the foci, and then sum up the lengths of those lines. It turns out for any given ellipse, the sums of those lines toward the foci will always be the same. We can use that definition to construct an ellipse. Take two pins and put them into some thick paper and then tie a thread between the pins. Put in a pen so that that thread is taut. Then trace out the ellipse. This activity creates the same curve as the angled cross section of a cone. But why? Why should these two seemingly different processes produce the same result? Introducing the Dandelion Sphere, a brilliant tool of mathematical artistry. Let's go back to the cone and the plane. We'll insert a sphere above the plane so it's just as snug as it can get inside that cone. The points of contact between the sphere and the cone form a horizontal circle. We can choose any point P along the ellipse and construct a line segment between that point and the vertex of the cone, which we can call V. That segment, PV, will be tangent to the sphere at a point which we will call F1 prime. Because PF1 and PF1 prime are each tangent to the sphere, they will have the same length. Just as any two line segments drawn from some point A outside of a circle, where each segment is tangent to that circle, those segments will have the same length. Now let's remove the plane for clarity and the, the sphere and put a new sphere underneath the ellipse. It will also touch where the plane was at some unique point F2, which is within the boundary of the ellipse. Extend the segment PV until it meets that lower sphere, and we'll call that point of intersection F2 prime. As before, PF2 and PF2 prime will both be tangent to the sphere and therefore both have the same length. So we have a line segment drawn from the vertex of the cone, point V, and it intersects these two circular cross sections at points F1 prime and F2 prime. That line segment intersects a tilted plane at some point P. And the position of point P along that line F1 prime, F2 prime is going to vary depending on where we draw that line. But that length, F1 prime, F2 prime, it's always going to be the same. But those two points correspond to F1 and F2, which are the focuses of the ellipse. Therefore, wherever we put the point P, when we draw a line segment between that point and both of the focuses, foci, the sum of those lengths will always be the same. Bob's your uncle. If you enjoyed this, 
give it a thumbs up and uh, check out some more exciting content. Bye.